Roman soldier's job. It was meant to be used by Caesar. But instead, it was used by God.
Not my will, but yours be done. Matthew 6, 33, we talked about this. I just got to add this in. We talked about this, I think, a couple Sundays ago. We've all read this verse, too. Matthew 6, 33, right? We know this one. Seek first the and his and he will
And immediately the rooster crowed, and Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Tonight we come across a story, a tragic story, where two of, two of Jesus' disciples betray and deny him. Both Judas and Peter, both followers of Jesus who have given everything up to follow him. Both disciples who have walked closely with him for three years have seen him perform miracles, have seen him heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, two of his closest friends, at the moment of Jesus' greatest need, desert. It's easy for us today to read the story and to see it as a horrific story that Judas and Peter, that they did to Jesus 2,000 years ago. But I want to challenge us, I want to challenge you, I want to challenge myself with a question. Where do you see yourself in this story? Where do you see yourself in the story of Jesus' betrayal and Jesus' denial? I believe that the only way to truly see the beauty of the cross and how it applies to us is to see it not just as a story of what others have done to Jesus, but to recognize and see it as what we as what you and I have done to Jesus ourselves. So where do you see yourself in this story? In verse 14 it says that one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. Is there anything in your life that you have traded and given up Jesus in the process? Jesus, Judas traded the riches of the world for Jesus. When have you pushed Jesus aside for your own ambitions, for temporary pleasures, for immediate and instant gratification? Where do you see yourself in the story? The Apostle Peter, the one who previously declared to Jesus, even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. When he was questioned by a servant girl and some bystanders, just as passionately denied Jesus with an oath, saying, I do not know the man. Peter, in the face of fear, denied Jesus, even when he thought he never would. Have you ever denied Jesus in the face of fear? Maybe you haven't denied him verbally, but have you denied him by the way you lived your life in the face of fear? Have you ever allowed fear to dictate your relationship? Take a moment. Let's take a moment to reflect, to consider if there's anything in our lives that we have traded and given up Jesus for. Or if, he, or if we have allowed fear to dictate our relationship with Jesus. Let's come to Him in prayer and repentance for the ways that we may have betrayed. 
take a moment. Come down from that cross. Cure my son of this stupid. Come. 
Show me and the rest of the world the light that shines in the darkness. It's Friday. I've got more important things to do than to come to church and sing for you. Here, yeah, the carpenter's kid who fancies himself with God. Where is our salvation? It's Friday. The bills need to be paid. It's Friday. My mother's mind is still crazy. It's Friday. My cousin still isn't saved. You say he must be born again. Return to his mother's womb. And this from a dead man in a borrowed tomb. It's Friday. All these promises you made and look at you. Look at me. Could you not even
Jesus in a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. And I had this perception like, we know that this is Good Friday because of what happens next. But I was thinking, how about the disciples? How about the people who were there? So they are struggling. They, for them, this is the worst day ever. And I was like, man, that is really tough to deal with. But then I realized, for some person, for one person that Friday, it was the best day ever.
John chapter 9, verses 28 to 30. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on the hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit.
until you've done all the good things that you think you need to do. Because on the cross, Jesus said, it is finished. That means you have time and opportunity right now. So if you would like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we invite you. We want to celebrate with you to come and join us in this meal together as we take this prayer. Let us take the body of Christ together. Peace. 
actually.